Hi guys, it's Lori. Are you a worrier? Do you find that you're constantly thinking about the negatives in your life or the negatives in other people's lives and trying to figure out how to make it work and maybe how to pay the bills or what to do about your health situation or your relationship or work? It's just you're always thinking about it and trying to fix it. Are you a person that worries a lot? We need to talk. I'll be right back. So worry. Are you one of those people that worries? What are your first thoughts when you get up in the morning? Is it, I mean, there's so many things going on in this world right now that, yeah, I mean, I it, it can be very dishearten, disheartening. It can be very dis concerning. Um, there's a lot going on. There, There's, I mean, I, I'm with you there. There's a lot of negative stuff, and especially those that know me personally know, sorry about my kitty, know that I, I know what it's like to have a lot of bad stuff going on. I know what it's like not to know from one day to the next what's going to happen. But worry is not going to change even one thing. Um, it's not going to add a day to your life. In Eastern philosophy, they say just for today, do not worry. Remember the um, the principles: just for today, do not anger; just for today, do not worry. Um, and the reason they say just for today is because you're taking it one day at a time. You know, if you can say just for today, I won't worry, it might be a little easier than saying I'll never worry again. Of course, we all slip up, right? But Jesus said, "Don't worry; it's not going to add a single day to your life." It's not, it's not going to change anything. In fact, it might take some days off of your life because we know when we worry, we get anxious. Um, so physically, we tense up. We're causing muscle problems. We're causing heart problems. We're causing every organ in our body to have some kind of issue, to have to work harder. We might lose sleep, which is unhealthy. We might sleep too much, which is unhealthy. Spiritually, worry blocks that which you're one that's that which you're trying to bring about. The worry is going to block that. It's going to nip it right in the bud. The Bible says, if a man seeks and doesn't believe he's going to get it, the double-minded man won't get anything. And what double-minded means is to say, "I have faith in you, God. I'm asking for your help," and then to turn around and worry about it, or to um, have you ever done this, like? Well, I'll just use money because it's easy. Okay, this bill is due. Lord, I need help. I don't have enough money. Please help me pay this bill. Okay, I have faith the Lord's going to help me pay this bill. And then you keep thinking about it and thinking about it and go, okay, well, if they call me, I'll tell them this. I need to make a payment arrangement. I mean, is that really believing that God's going to take care of it? Now, if you sit back in prayer and what you what you are led to is to call that company and make a payment arrangement, that's different. That's not not living in faith. I'm talking about making plan B. You know what I mean? Um, and what if I told you this? What Now, this might sound a little crazy, but if you're worried, and, you know, I know sometimes people worry about other people, too. Again, if they're, instead of worrying, help, okay? Um, don't worry about another person. Help. Um, if whatever they need. And again, it goes back to listening. Don't just give them something you think they need. Listen to what they need. And if you can offer it, offer it. If you think they need something else, talk to them about it. Don't just assume that you know better than they do. Just like we assume that we know better than God and we ask him for help, but then we proceed to fix it ourselves or worry, worry, worry about it. That's a control thing. And, you know, for a lot of us, we've had to take care of ourselves all our lives or we're taking care of other people all our lives or we've been abandoned or left alone or whatever and we've had to fend for ourselves. It's very hard to let go of control and hand it over to God once you come to know him when you're so used to taking care of yourself. But if you look back in your life, I'm sure that you can see that every time you took control of it, yeah, you might have got through it. 
But it's so much easier when you hand it over to him because we have this tendency to mess things up, okay? Um, basically what Jesus says, I have it right here. It's, it's in Matthew 6. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, nor soar, <laughs> they do not sow, nor do they reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? That's just one of the verses. And then it goes on. It goes on to talk about, um, let's see, that's, that's. Um, let me go to, I'm sorry. I am sorry, but. Um, um, therefore, I tell you. Uh, okay, wait, I already said that right. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or your body, what you will wear. Is life not more than food? Okay. Um, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your lifespan? Um, and, and he does go on to say, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things. Your father knows what you need, basically. Now, is he just, he's not a genie in the sky. I don't, I don't mean to imply that. Okay, but how would you feel if I told you this? If you are constantly in worry, constantly in a state of worry, and some people say, I'm a worrier, I just can't help it. I beg to differ. Yes, you can. It's very difficult, especially, like I said, if you have been taking care of yourself or others all your life and you're like head of household, it's very hard to let go of that control. Believe me, I know. I am right there with you. But the moment you hand it over and you release it, you can live in peace and just pay attention. We have such a hard time paying attention. And if you're in worry, then you're in fear. And if you're in fear and worry, you're not listening. You're not listening to other people. You're not helping. You're not helping other people. Even if you're trying to, you're not because you're taking control of things. And you're not going to manifest anything. You're not going to get answered prayer. And how about if I tell you you're being self-centered? You're being too self-involved, too self-absorbed. Even if it's about somebody else, you're being selfish because it's not your job, first of all, to fix everything. And I don't say that to say, you know, oh, just go walk away. That's not what I mean. In the book of James, it tells us if your brother is hurting and you come up to him and you see him and you say, oh, geez, I'm sorry, I'll pray for you. And you walk away. You're not doing the right thing. So I'm not saying, when I say don't worry about others, I don't mean don't care for others. I mean, don't worry about it. What is worry going to do? Act on it. Act on it in faith. See, if you're not walking in worry, then you're walking in faith and you're freer to help other people because you're not worried. You know that God's going to take care of it. So if, if you're, if you're walk if you're self if you're worried all the time, you're in your self bubble, okay? Now, don't beat yourself up if you're a worrier. And don't say, I can't stop. I just can't help it. What you need to do is you need to take a deep breath. Raise your vibration up. Here it is. Lord, I hand it over to you. I trust that whatever you say is right. I trust you. This is what I need. This is what I believe I need. This is what I want. It says in the Bible, make all your requests known to God. Of course, he already knows. People say, why do I have to make my requests known to him? He knows. It's just like a parent. I might know what my kids need, but I want them to come to me. I want a relationship with them. I don't just want to be like giving them everything and no relationship. I want a relationship with them. I want them to know that I love them. I want to give them more than stuff. That's why we don't seek the hand of God. We seek the face of God. And in turn, and in seeking his face, we get his love, his mercy, his grace, and his favor. Now, are you always going to get what you want? No, God's not a genie in a bottle. We don't control him. We don't tell him what to do. we got to trust that he knows better than us. So if you're a worrier, if you walk and worry, like I said, deep breath. In the morning, you catch yourself. You're waking up, and first things first, you're worry, worry, worry. 
Stop yourself. Take a deep breath. Good morning, God. Thank you for waking me up. Find five things at least or a couple things to be grateful for. Stop the chatter in your head. You stop that how? By speaking a word. Good morning, God. I am a child of the Most High God. Today, I will pay attention. I will be discerning, but I will seek out someone to help. If I don't have the money to pay that bill, I don't have the money to pay that bill. God knows when it's due, and I'm going to trust him to have me pay that bill if I'm supposed to have what I need to pay for. That takes the worry off me. What my focus is, is how can I please you? Now, obedience is uh, worth more than sacrifice. So don't try to be, you know, this martyr, you know, and if you screw up, if you fall, turn to him and say, oh gosh, I am so sorry. And try not to do it again. But you know what? Seek first the kingdom. So what does that mean? Okay, first I'm going to seek you. I'm going to hand over all my problems and I am going to praise him and thank him because there's something to thank him for. Okay, what can I do today? Who can I help? Because now you're stepping outside of your little bubble. You're stepping outside of that. You're not worried about these people. You might be concerned for them. I'm not saying not to be concerned, not to have compassion. But worry only blocks things for people. So if you're worried about people, you're blocking stuff for them. You have to have enough trust that God knows what he's doing. And yes, do bad things happen in this world? There is nowhere in history, nowhere written down unless it's by somebody who's lying. God never promised to make everything wonderful for the, the Christian. That's not what he said. He said, I will give you peace through it. This world is a fallen world, and one day we won't have to deal with this anymore. But today we're here. And what is our main purpose? Is to spread the word, to show people just who he is and how life can be with him. And that doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. In fact, worldly people are going to not be happy with you, you know. You may find yourself under attack more, but you'll have peace. See, worry's not going to add anything to your life. It's not going to add anything. Like I said, it's going to mess you up physically. It could actually take away time from your life, time from your family, time from those that you love, time away from work. Worry can really mess you up. It can make you physically ill. Spiritually, it blocks your connection to God. It blocks, therefore, taking away your power, taking away your empowerment, bringing you down lower and lower and lower, and blocking that which you need to take away the worry to boot. Don't worry. Be concerned. Don't just, you know, when I say don't worry, I don't mean just sit back. Oh, God will take care of it and do nothing. No, heavens no, no. You get up, you take a deep breath, you raise your, you raise your vibration. You talk to him. He knows anyway, so you can't fake it and say, oh, no, I'm not worried about anything. He knows. He knows you're worried. And don't beat yourself up. Take it. God, take this from me. I don't want to worry about it. I don't want to worry about it. Keep speaking positive affirmations. Go into the Bible and get that verse. Do not worry, Matthew 6. Write down some other verses where God's promising to take care of you. Um, Job 35, 11, who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of the heaven. Who prepares for the raven its nourishment when its young cry to God and wander about without food? I know every bird of the mountains and everything that moves in the field is mine. That's Psalm 50, 51. Um, he gives to the beast its food and to the young ravens which cry. Uh, Psalm 147, 9. Matthew 10, 29, are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of the Father. Uh, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and will build bigger ones, and there I will store up for grains and goods. Um, Luke 12, 24, consider the ravens. They do not sow, nor do they reap. They have no storehouse or barn, but yet God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than birds? Um, 
Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Um, let's see. Um, okay, these are all the same, but there's many more. I mean, we could go over it and over it and over it. Any spiritual guru knows that worry is going to create blocks. Fear and faith cannot coexist. They can't. One wipes out the other. Just like light and dark cannot coexist. Why walk in the darkness when you have the light? And as soon as, think about it, you're in a dark, dark, dark room. You put a flashlight on and you have just de defeated the dark. Light will always overcome dark. Always. In the end. It may not seem that way right now. I know with this, oh, this shift going on and these attacks and the portal being thinner. The attacks are out of control. Believe me, I'm not taken away from the way you feel if you are under attack or if you're going through a whole lot. I am not minimizing that. I get it. Believe me, I get it. You got to walk in faith, not worry. And see, in walking in faith, if you truly have faith, you might be having something really negative going on. But if you're truly walking in faith, you can say, okay, Lord, what am I supposed to do today? And he will lead you to help another. And he will lead another to help you. And see, we'll all walk. That's the way we should be. We should be interconnected, brothers and sisters, through God. And we're interconnected. And we should not worry about, well, if I help you, I'm not going to have enough. Or if I do this, I'm going to drain my energy. And i got to make sure I'm okay before I help you. And, you know, I know people that say that. you got to take care of number one. Uh, or you can't help anybody else. There is truth in that. You can't run yourself ragged. But I believe that in this day and age, too many people take that little phrase and they use it to their advantage. And they say, oh, i got to take care of me. I can't help you. It's not the way it's supposed to be. If you're truly raising your vibration, you're going to help other people. So if you wake up and the first thing on your mind is your worry, step back. Just step back. Give yourself 10 seconds. Speak out loud these positive thoughts and go seek first the kingdom. How can you make it better? How can you make it better for somebody else? You know, it's not going to change things overnight. It's going to change right here, though. And with that, now what happens? Okay, it starts changing you. First of all, even if nothing in the physical realm has changed and you still get all those worries, now you're walking in peace. Now you feel good because you've helped another person. That And do you know endorphins are actually released when you help another person? For you, the helper, for the person that was helped, and for anybody who witnessed it. So now you've got endorphins flying, so you're feeling better physically. Your anxiety is gone, so you're feeling better physically. Your heart's getting a break. You're sleeping better. You're eating better. Now you've got a passion to go help someone else, so you're creating all this energy around you that is going to bring about more positive. It helps all the way around. I hope I'm making sense, guys. I really, I had this all laid out to tell you in a way that you would maybe understand better, but I just get off, off track because I'm so passionate about this. I am going to be starting online classes. I want to start them, um, today's Monday, not, maybe it'll either be next Monday or the following Monday. If you'd like to sign up for, um, empowerment classes, let me know. I'm going to make them very affordable, and um, we can do them online. But it won't be video. Well, I'll have some videos like this, but I'll also have live live feeds. And we can even meet up if, if it's people in the area. But if it's not, we you know, we can do it online. Guys, we need each other now more than ever. This world is, the energy is getting heavier and heavier and heavier. It's those that are asleep or those that are walking in the darkness that seem to be seem to be doing okay. We can't let that. That's a big deception. We can't let ourselves be fooled by that. And the biggest thing we need to do more than anything at all, other than, you know, seeking first the kingdom, that's of course first. But we need to stand together. Stop worrying so much. Don't worry. It only creates blocks. 
And again, if you think, oh, I can't, I'm just that way. Yes, you can. You can train yourself. It takes 21 days to develop a habit. Why not develop a good one? All right, guys, I will talk to you very soon. I'm sorry this video is so long. Take care. I'll see you in the next video.